Hello and welcome back to Bug Rounds. On this channel we like to discuss all things creepy crawly. So if that's something that interests you, please consider subscribing to the channel. Now you were probably expecting an Entercon video to come out at you because I did attend Entercon on the 1st of March. Now the reason this video is actually coming out before the Entercon videos is it's recorded before and it's all about the Lamponius Gurini for our Phasmid Files video. But I won't have these after this footage is taken and the reason being is I am donating them to the raffle at Entercon because the raffle raises money for the Musgrove Hospital Special Care Baby Unit. So that is something that has some importance to me, not because I've had a sick baby, thank God, but I know people that have gone through that kind of thing and it's just a lovely charity and I just feel like I want to be involved. I'm actually donating more than just these particular stick insects as well, but that's something we'll get onto later. So please stay tuned to the channel if you want to see what happened at Entercon, whether it be show footage coming up next or just pickups, depending on how the day went. I don't know, because I haven't actually been there yet. <laughs> but anyway, we're going to get on with this Phasmid Files video now. So folks, here we have a female specimen of the Lamponius gurini. They hold the common name of the Guadalupe stick insect. Now this is purely because of their locality. Their PSG number, or Phasmid study group number, is 101. A nice and easy one to remember. Females such as this specimen only reach around about 9 centimetres, whereas their male counterparts are a little smaller. The known food plants to me are bramble, eucalyptus, ivy, oak, pyracantha, raspberry, rose and salal. There may well be more food plants that these will take to, but these are the ones to my knowledge. I personally have found it easier to raise these purely on bramble or bramble with a little bit of ivy. But there's no harm in giving a combination of plants. However, with a lot of phasmids, if they don't have the combination near the beginning of their lifespan, they may not take to some of the other plants as they grow older. So my Lamponius gurini are a sexual culture, meaning they need males to reproduce. Would you like to have a look at a male? I'll get one for you. For size comparison reasons, I have placed the male next to the female. What differences can you see? I'll name the ones I spot. First of all, look how slender he is. Now the position he's in, he doesn't look that much smaller. They do in fact grow to about two centimeters smaller than females. Here is the end of the male's abdomen. Let's compare it with the difference of the females. There, do you see? Not only does she have a wider part at the end of her abdomen, but although it may be difficult to see, she actually has a very small overlaying section. You see that sort of spike bit underneath, now that it's got the contrast to my thumb? That's how you can determine the female. The male does not have this, as you can see. He has a sort of lump come out, but nothing protruding forwards. Here's a better look at the head of the male. You can really see the difference compared to the female now in his slender ways. What's great about these species is their markings. They can be completely different from one specimen to another. Some stay just plain brown. Others get these white markings upon them. And as they grow up, they also have a variant of colours. You can get greens, different shades of browns, creamy colours. They're a fascinating phasmid to keep. Here's the female again. Look how calm she is to walk along me. She's barely phased at all. This is why I'll put their difficulty rating at easy. Probably a one out of 10. They're calm movers upon your hands, so that makes them great for children to handle. They have no secretion that I'm aware of or spray or any real defense capabilities that they can use to cause any harm or any scare even which makes them absolutely perfect for beginners. Notice how she has blacker markings upon her whiter markings. Really, really interesting. And could you imagine having a full culture of these, all different sort of shapes and colors in the patterning along their bodies and abdomens? Now you can see she does have some small spines along her body and legs, but I can barely even feel them. 
and they've never kicked me in defence and as I said they've never shown any sign of threat whatsoever. Oh she's just nudged the male there. Now I do find the males to be that slight bit more skittish than females but still not much difference at all especially when it comes to handling. Now the first specimens do not hide from me please. <laughs> as I was saying the first specimens of the Lamponius gorini were actually found by a French stick insect group. Oh, she can't cling to that surface very well. Let's put her back on the leaves. Come on, girl. So as I was saying, the French actually found them first back in 1984. So these were discovered an awful long time ago. Over from these beauties are simply dropped by the phasmid. Some species like to stick eggs, flick eggs or bury eggs. But as I said, these simply just drop them to the ground. Now unfortunately I don't have any to show off to you right now. But they're very small and beigey brown. I'll add a picture that I took from the phasmid study group page on the screen now. Now these are really small guys so you may not notice the patterning that you can actually see in this picture. Another reason I like to put these into the beginners category is because they're also wingless. Yay! Because if anyone knows me well enough they know I freak out sometimes with the winged insects. They live for around a year but over incubation period is more like 8 to 10 months. If your ova hasn't hatched within that 10 month period Give it a few more, sometimes they can take a year or longer. One top tip though when it comes to eggs guys, never throw them out. If you think that the eggs have died off, freeze them to make sure they are fully killed off before you throw them in the rubbish tip. The last thing you want happening is a species hatching and dying from your cold weather, or even potentially worse, culturing in your country, which is completely illegal. Now I'd recommend a 30 centimetre tall enclosure for these guys. You could have it ever so slightly smaller, but larger would be much preferred. I find that they do better in storage boxes or tanks than they do net cages, because they do require a moderate amount of humidity. You can't go wrong too easily with these guys, I've had them slightly more humid and slightly more dry, with quite a bit of success. Times you will go unsuccessful however, are dry periods with dried out food. They will not last long at all. They get a lot of their water content from the leaves. Just make sure to give a mist now and again so they have something extra to drink from. Notice that on the edges of the legs there you have that reddish colour. Something we've discussed several times with phasmids to show sign of maturity. Indian stick insects have them. Phenopharocaoensis also have them and many other species, such as my Phryganistra. The actual reason why is completely unknown to me. But it's pretty cool, right? Maybe it's because it's red, a sign of warning. Back off. Leave me be. I'm dangerous. Of course, they really aren't. Or perhaps it's because red is an enlarging colour. So when they wave in defence to say, I'm big, stay away from me, the red flash might deter predators. If somebody knows the actual answer to this, I would love to know. I love stick insect eyes. I have a fascination with them. I'd love to get a macro lens and have a proper look at the sort of marble effect that they have. And I love how long antenna can be where they're sensing their environment and the little hooks on their feet. <laughs> I'm probably boring you guys now, but I just absolutely love everything about stick insects. So anyway guys, if you want to see what else dwells in the realm, make sure to pop back weekly for multiple videos. If you've enjoyed this one, check out my other Phasmid Files videos. Or if stick insects aren't your cup of tea, I also deal with tarantulas, mantis, scorpions and various other things. Just check out my past videos. Have an easy and see what suits you. So we'll say goodbye to our male up here. And bye to our female before she escapes on the chair. Thanks for watching everybody. I'll see you next time. I hope you enjoy the upcoming Enticon video. Take care. Bye-bye.